all inventions start with an inspiration. Most are inspired by need. It's like they say, necessity is the mother of all inventions. But we didn't need to fly, did we? We didn't need to go to the moon. Some of the greatest invention of our time come from an entirely different inspiration, our imagination. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We are Team 1B, and today we are here to share our imagination with you. My name is Vinny Jeet. I'm the team leader. Steve Ward, Kyle Akaria, and Chenny All Yu. We are all fourth-year electrical and computer systems engineering students at the University of Auckland. As we start, please focus on that one child, one life you see in front of you. Half of the nearly 2.4 billion children worldwide are inadequately educated or receive no education whatsoever. Imagine. Imagine what the world, imagine what we, imagine what you can do to provide these children with the tools to improve their education and learning. So today we are going to take you through what the world is doing, what we are doing, and what you can do. The world has come up with the One Laptop Per Child, OLPC, and the Intel Classmate PC initiative. Cheap education device for use in the developing world. 2.4 million of these laptops are already in operation in some of the most remote regions of the world. And millions, millions more to come. Now the question you might have is why? Why give a laptop to a child who may have no electricity or even running water? Well, if you replace the word laptop with education, the answer becomes clear. You do not stop education until all the other challenges are solved. Food, water, shelter. You do them at the same time. Because education is the foundation to the other solutions. 2.6 million laptops. OLPC has plans to deploy 30 million laptops over the next five years. This sounds pretty good to me. What is the problem here? Well, they have no connectivity. No broadband, 3G, 4G, fiber to the door. There is no feasible way of updating these laptops with education content classroom curriculum, health information. These laptops are digitally disconnected. And that does not help in the education of the children. So, what is the solution? Well, the solution is the power of radio with the power of one beep. Because with the power of radio signals, we can transmit beep, 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 beep information to these devices in a way that is low cost, free, highly available, highly reliable, and it incurs no for the infrastructure costs. Let me paint you a picture. Let's take a look in South America. What's already there? Well, between the OLPC and Intel Classmate PC programs, there are already 1.2 million laptops already distributed. There are also enough broadcasting stations throughout the entire continent to give coverage to the most remote regions. Now I'll zoom in a little bit closer to Peru. Here, there has been 500,000 laptops already deployed. However, 95% of these have no connectivity. So what's missing to connect these hundreds and thousands of laptops to the outside world? Quite simply, one beep software and a cheap audio cable. So all we need to do is provide them with the software. They've already got the other ingredients, such as the cheap radio, 
the cheap cable, the existing radio infrastructure. So what we need to do is take the cable, plug it into the laptop, plug it into the radio, and use the power of radio waves to transmit health and educational material to these devices. It's so simple, yet so brilliant. Now imagine you are part of the Ministry of Education of Rwanda in the city of Kigali, and you want to send educational material to the remote village of Ramagana. Sure, you could send a jeep with a package of information. However, this is anything but practical. Using the one beep solution, we can send information straight to these devices, whether they're in the classroom or at home. And what's more is we can send it to hundreds of other villages simultaneously. Let me show you how it works. A chosen file, which has been selected to send, is converted into audio using the publisher. This audio can then be played from any radio transmitter. It is then received through a simple radio connected to the laptop and converted back to the original document before being presented to the user. Now Vinny will get a comment from the audience, which we will do a live demonstration of the transmission of the document. This is a fully functional prototype, and it only requires a powerful transmitter and a radio license to deploy the system. If and what. Two simple and seemingly harmless words of the English language. But if you put them together, they have the potential to haunt you for the rest of your life. What if? Us Kiwis usually don't work in the what-if domain. We are doers. We work in the we-did domain. And now Chanyol and I will give you a live demonstration of what we did. There are two parts to our one beep solution, the radio broadcaster end and the user receiving end. We're currently at a stage where we can transmit any digital file. We can transmit Word documents, PDF files, images, even software. We can also insert a subject tag, which we use to categorize this file once it has been received. Due to our timing constraints today, we would like to show you the transmission of a text message. Have with me the message that was written by someone in the audience. And we're going to transmit this over the radio. Now, once you've decided what you would like to transmit, I click the Publish button and corresponding audio file we created. Now, this audio file can be played over any broadcasting station. It can be played over FM, AM, VHF, UHF. The frequency is independent. Today, we'll be using a commercial FM transmitter, which is just a small-scale version of a real radio broadcasting station. As Steve mentioned, all that we require is a powerful transmitter and a radio license to deploy the system. I will explain about the receiving end. Please note that there is a lot of interference in, the, in this room, but we will still try to give a live demonstration. Here we have the receiving station ready. This is conventional radio, which is connected to the laptop using simple, cheap audio cable. This is the receiving interface as seen by the user. Our software has a special feature called Auto Start. When the software catches the valid transmission signal, it will automatically start to record. Therefore, as a result, the end user do not need to know the exact start time of the transmission. Kayo, can you please start the transmission? When the software catches the valid transmission signal, the software will automatically start to record. After that, it goes to analysis mode in which it tries to locate and fix errors if there are any. When the analysis is done, it will show you We will try one more time due to interference. When the, when the analysis is done, it will show you the name of the file and the subject tag which is attached from the transmitting end. The number beside the tag shows you the number of errors that are found and fixed successfully. Okay. 
here is the file received. So we can now receive any digital file. What if we made this solution a reality? What if we did send a tutorial about new farming practices to a remote village? How does the ability to receive new educational content affect these children and these communities? My name is Zimi. I'm seven years old. I come from a place you've never heard of. A country you cannot pronounce. A continent you'd rather forget. Our real problem is access to education. With education, we will solve our own problems. One of the biggest issues with getting educational content to these children today is a lot of the material that's distributed is not in their native language. Using this way of sending it all via digital files, we can send the educational content in their first language. Secondly, many NGOs and government ministry sectors send out informative pamphlets on critical issues such as malaria and HIV. We can also incorporate this with the file sending technique, getting the information to the people who need it. Now, let's talk about the impact. If we think about the world today, which is fortunate enough to have technologies which create such a cultural evolution as the internet, allowing us to find information on almost anything instantly, enabling us to communicate with friends and family all over the world. Then we think about the countries between us without this luxury. They are getting left in the dark as the world around them takes quantum leaps in their ability to educate and communicate and evolve from this technology. So we have shown you the efforts and initiatives have made in order to try and connect us all at a global level. Maximizing the potential of these initiatives is the one beep solution. We are creating a way to bridge this digital divide, enabling us to get a step closer to the United Nations goal of achieving universal primary education. Now the question you might have again is will such solutions help towards solving the world's toughest problems, like achieving the universal millennium development goal of illiteracy? Well, we talked to people who work in the field and have got extensive experience of working in such communities. But the response we have got is overwhelmingly positive. Here is a former director general of the World Trade Organization, the technical advisor to the Solomon Islands Ministry of Education, the ex-president of the OLPC Foundation himself. We have shown you what the world is doing. Created and deployed 2.6 million laptops and millions, millions more to come. What are we doing? Well, using the power of radio and the magic of the one beep software, we're helping connect the digitally disconnected. We are giving these children the tools to improve their education and learning. If you want more information about our project, it is available on our website, www.1beep.org. Now to the future. Well, illiteracy is but one of the world's biggest challenges. The World Millennium Development Goals were set out to be completed by 2015. Now, if we want to have a chance to achieving that before the situation gets out of hand, we need to adapt, we need to innovate, and we need to change. We need to have new thinking to solve the challenges that we face today. As Sir Ken Robinson said in one of his TED Talks, what we need is not an evolution, but a revolution. You're here at TEDx today because you believe in something. You're already the part of the much needed revolution we need. We come from a land where new is in our name. Let's show the world how it's done. Let's be the world leaders.
Thank you very much, and stay tuned. Thank you.